said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy. Welcome to Unsung, the Pittsburgh region's nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker, and I am here on Mount Washington with a beautiful view of our skyline. There is no question that this is a beautiful city, but it is more than just this view. Unsung will bring you the stories of the Pittsburgh community, stories from nonprofit organizations that are making it a better place to live, and the individuals that are doing good for our neighbors. Much of this work does not make the news, and that is what Unsung is all about, telling the stories that need to be told. Today we will visit Just Harvest, an advocacy organization on behalf of the hungry and poor in our community, and find out how you can be a voice for those that don't have one. We'll also take you to the recent Good Neighbor Award sponsored by the United Way of Allegheny County. But first, let's see what is happening around the region with our nonprofit organizations. The Andy Warhol Museum and Homewood Artist Residency announced the unveiling of Home, a large-scale installation created by Homewood-based artist Tina William Brewer and Vanessa German. Home blends the memories and voices of Homewood's residents into a 10-foot installation. Brewer and German incorporate found objects from the neighborhood such as items from demolished Homewood homes, donated shoes, and old photos. The ultimate vision of Homewood is to rehabilitate abandoned homes in Homewood and split the homes into two spaces, living and studio exhibition space for contemporary artists. Each artist would be asked to create a project that reflects upon the overarching history and culture of Homewood. The goal of Homewood is to support artists of color, bring diversity to the contemporary arts community in Pittsburgh, and to engage a community that has limited access to the visual arts. Homewood is supported by a seed award from the Sprout Fund. Teams of volunteers from more than 30 local companies, schools, and churches participated in the 19th Annual Rebuilding Day on April 30, 2011. The yearly event musters community-minded Pittsburghers to provide low-income senior citizens with much-needed home repairs. Extensive work is undertaken by the volunteers throughout the homes, including new roofs, modified accessible bathrooms, wheelchair ramps, and upgraded electrical systems. Many of these repairs are life-changing for our senior citizen population. Some of the local groups that volunteered their time and expertise include the Greater Pittsburgh Carpenters Council, the American Society of Home Inspectors, and the Western PA Occupational Therapist Association. Last month, the Heinz Endowments released Clearing the Haze, an independent study of the region's air quality commissioned to the Clean Air Task Force, an internationally respected science-based nonprofit. The report fine particulate matter and ozone air quality in western Pennsylvania in the 2000s was based on a six-month examination of years of federal, state, and Allegheny County data. It showed that despite some marked improvement, the Pittsburgh region has not kept up with the pace of improvement in most other regions and still has some of the most polluted air in the country. The report confirms findings from previous air quality studies in the Pittsburgh region that particulate matter pollution levels put residents at a much higher risk for life-threatening illnesses than nearly all other regions across the country. The report concluded that though wind-carried pollution from neighboring states is a significant contributor to western Pennsylvania's air problem, failure to clean up in-state sources prevents the region from improving as fast as other parts of the country. To better protect human and environmental health, report recommends a more comprehensive air monitoring system for the region. And that's the news around our neighborhoods. Let's take it down to Chris at Just Harvest. Hi, I'm Christopher Whitlatch and I'm here at Just Harvest today. And Just Harvest is a nonprofit organization founded in 1986 and they work towards the elimination of hunger and poverty by promoting economic justice. The organization fights hunger, but not in the typical way that you might think. You see, the organization doesn't distribute food like a pantry or a food bank might. Rather, it focuses on winning long-term solutions to circumstances that allow hunger to persist. Through policy advocacy at the local, state, and federal levels, for strong public safety nets, Just Harvest helps to ensure that anti-hunger and anti-poverty programs like cash assistance, food stamps, or free or reduced price school meals remain robust and accessible to those who really need them. The organization also connects low-income and needy county residents with programs designed to help them. 
It offers food stamp application assistance to over 1,500 clients annually and free income tax preparation services for low-income households in partnership with the United Way of Allegheny County. Today we're going to sit down with Tara Marks and Ken Regal. Currently, the challenges that we face are enormous, both from the economic circumstances that the whole country is in um, and from the policy environment that we're in nationally and in the state of Pennsylvania um, with um, a real um, uh, full frontal assault on the lives of poor people in a lot of ways right now. And some of that assault is uh, people proposing bills that make it harder for folks to access safety net um, programs. For example, um, some of the things that uh, the wise people in Harrisburg think that to prevent fraud is to put pictures on uh, EBT cards, fingerprinting, drug testing, um, anything that they can think of to make it harder for folks to receive these benefits for those who are, who are really in need of the benefits. That uh, this idea of how to balance the budget on the backs of low-income folks is just not acceptable and they're going to collectively uh, make their voice heard. Um, some of the other things that we ask folks to do is that uh, go to talk to their legislative members. And a, a core part of our mission is to empower people in poverty to speak up for themselves, to demand their own uh, rights, to, to demand that public officials be accountable to them as well as to their big campaign donors. Um, we had someone call us particularly about the fingerprinting bill and say, um, I'm not a criminal, I'm, I'm a, a grandma. <laughs> and I, for us, that kind of experience that people are being put through really sums it up. We had a client recently who um, had tried it on her own to apply for food stamps. Uh, she got a letter at one point from her case uh, from the from the welfare department office, uh, telling her when her interview uh, needed to be held, and the letter said four days ago. Uh, that's not an uncommon experience. That process um, denies about 9,000 people every month in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I can tell you that this place is just reaming with people when it's tax season. It's exciting to see that all these folks that come in. I was told a story, um, a woman, I was at an event not too long ago and I was tabling about food stamps. And uh, when she found out we did tax preparation also, she said, how much, how much does that cost? And I said, it's free as long as you meet certain income guidelines. And she said, what did you say? I said, free, and she instantly started tearing up. And she said, I just paid $700. Uh, everybody's part of the solution, and uh, we certainly encourage you to call us, get involved, uh, donate, um, participate in our advocacy work, uh, friend us on f Facebook, uh, uh, follow us in, in other social media, uh, look at our website, learn about the hunger problem. Um, but what you do on your own is equally important as, as what you do as part of our organization's work. And be an educated voter. Um, our phone number is 412-431-8960. We're very proud that we're one of the few people that you call, you actually get a live voice. Um, we pride ourselves well, on that. Almost all the time. All the time, unless you get a voicemail. <laughs> but uh, there's no prompting here. Um, but they also can visit us on the web at www.justharvest.org to learn more about our services. But I really encourage folks to give us a call because again, we need many voices that we can get together. Thanks, Chris. Now let's check out some of the content that was contributed to PittsburghOnVideo.org. And you guys are Hi, great. I'm, I'm Bob. Hi, I'm Bill. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Bob Nelkin, president of the United Way. I'm Bill Eisler, president of Fred Rogers Company. Oh, you changed the we name? Changed of the name. We changed what was it before? It used to be Family Communications. It's now the oh. Fred Rogers Company. Oh. Anyhow, so the idea for this is to celebrate Fred's birthday. Did you, right. you know today? Today, March 20th. Right. Every year, we recognize. Last year it was on the plaza, Shenley Plaza, plaza with hundreds of what college students. What did they call it? MASH? No. It was something they were there. This, this, this year, fabulous. let me show this is you. absolutely gorgeous. This is what we're going to give to the companies. This who, is going to Chatham University. Who encourage what volunteers. Yeah. So today, right? March 20th, March 2011, we're going to recognize first 20 the first, companies. First. 20, I'm sorry, nonprofits who help um, recruit the, the volunteers right. and assign them and support them, and 11 companies. Companies whose employees went out to them. You get the you 2011 thing? 2011, you did a great job, I'm telling you, and I remember that. You sat in my office and you said, 2011, and I'm going in to marketing and communications as soon as I'm able to sign a <laughs> job. That's what you said. We're going to have a great time tonight. Oh, it's going to be fun. And we're going to do this every year. Every we're going to keep Fred's memory alive. I better help you. 
Oh. I mean, I can see you, <laughs> see you strain. I just had surgery. <laughs> I know. I can see you strain. I felt really good yeah, about that. that. I'm Craig Stevens. I work at Family Resources and run a volunteer income tax assistance site. So that's why we're being honored here tonight as one of the programs. But I have a very special memory of Mr. Rogers. I mean, I do remember him uh, as a child when our kids were growing up. But I got to know him personally somewhat because he belonged to the church that my wife was associate pastor at. And they got to be very close, and I got to know him very well. And he's more genuine, of course, in person than he was on TV, but I mean, he's, he's such a real guy. He really had powerful values and uh, cared about the world and really believed in making the world a better place. So I'm also wearing a tie that belonged to him that he gave away for a fundraiser. So I kind of think of him when I'm wearing my Save the Children tie. <laughs> Thank you. That's my memory. Okay, Max is going to share his favorite Mr. Rogers story. Uh, well, my favorite Mr. Rogers story and moment is always near the beginning whenever he he uh, comes back from work or wherever he was and he sings this, this song about taking off his shoes and he does this whole wardrobe change and I just thought that was really neat. It was like sort of a tradition that he did every time. And you wore your sweater. Yeah. Very nice. Hi, Allie. Hi. Hi. All right, Nate's going to tell us uh, his favorite things about the Mr. Rogers shows. Okay, well, I don't really remember the order that these things happened, but I always liked, as a kid, sitting in front of the TV, and he would walk by his fish tank and sprinkle fish food in, and then flip on his little magic picture, and it would come to life, and documentaries of crayons being made or coins would, would come on, and I liked that. I like learning about things like that and had a really nice way of presenting it. Listen, Joanne, tell us your favorite story about Fred. And we want everyone to hear so. a good story about Fred because this is the celebrate his life. Now remember, when Fred wasn't on TV, he always wore a bow tie. Always. And when he traveled, he always had a bow tie. Now you tell us. Fred never wanted to go away from home on trips, and I always did, I didn't pay too much attention because I knew what it would be like when he got back. He was always full of praise for the wonderful neighbors we have out there. And so this one trip he came back, and I said, "How was the flight?" And he, and he began to laugh. And I said, why are you laughing? And he said, well, I was going to get on the plane, and I was going on the ramp leading to the, leading to the plane's door. And I could see the flight attendant ahead, and I kept walking, and the more I walked, I could see the wheels going around in her head. And she begins to smile more and more. And I got right up to her, and she said, I just love your popcorn. <laughs> and the people always want to know what was Fred's reply. He said, I love popcorn too. <laughs> and went and sat down. <laughs> but they called it Burkle for several days. Carnegie Museum of Art and Pittsburgh Song Collaborative present concert Illuminations, Music, Poetry, and Art. Thursday, May 12th, 2011, at the Carnegie Lecture Hall. On Saturday, May 21st, 2011, the 18th Class of Leadership Development Initiative, a program of Leadership Pittsburgh Incorporated, will present the third Pop-Up Pittsburgh, Lights, Camera, Fine View. This year, the Fine View neighborhood in the north side will pop up as it is transformed for one day only into a Hollywood movie set. The event starts at 1 p.m. You are invited to dress as a zombie as the class will be filming a scene for their upcoming Spine View short film. More information is available at popuppittsburgh.com. Pittsburgh is Art Day of Giving is May 11th at pittsburghgives.org. Starting at midnight and ending at 11.59 p.m., your gift of $15 or more to local arts organizations will be matched. 
Box Easter Oratorio, their first performance ever in the Pittsburgh area, will be performed by the Pittsburgh Baroque Ensemble at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, 5801 Hampton Street. Tickets, $20 at the door. We hope you've enjoyed the first edition of Unsung. Tune in to pittsburghonvideo.org for extended interviews and future episodes. I'm your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. In a lab rockin' with the Fresh Prince of Pittsburgh. So this the new way. Hope you got your shoes laid. Here to change the music game and give it a new face. I'm taking someone, don't care who's late. Cause dude's fake and I'm here to give a true taste. So this the new way. Hope you got your shoes laid. Here to change the music game and give it a new face. I'm taking someone, don't care who's late. Cause dude's fake and I'm here to give a true taste. True I know taste. my name.